So, hello everybody. My name is Bruno Siciliano. I am a professor of control and robotics in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Information Technology at the University of Napoli in Italy. Uh, actually, it's the University of Napoli Federico II, who was the founder of the university back in 1224. I am director of the PRISMA Lab. PRISMA is an acronym that stands for Projects of Robotics for Industry, Services, Mechatronics and Automation. And today I'm going to speak about uh, one research areas in which we've been working in the last uh, six, seven years, and this is the area of uh, aerial manipulation. So to give an idea of um, what uh, kind of research we've been engaged in the last uh, 30 years, um, I have just one slide introducing my Prisma team. Uh, this, is, uh, this is my team. They knew that uh, I was with you uh, here this morning, so they are just cheering to all the readership of the International Journal of um, Advanced Robotic Systems. So, besides myself, there is Luigi Villani, who is an associate professor, and Vincenzo Lipiello, who is an assistant professor, and all the other names are either postdocs or PhD students uh, in, our, in our team. And as you can see from this slide, we've been engaged in a number of uh, projects, research projects, which have been funded by the European Union. Uh, those are the three projects which were funded in the sixth framework program. Uh, and those are the projects which have been funded in the seventh framework program. And actually today, I'm going to speak about uh, these three projects in the middle column, which uh, concern with the area of uh, aerial manipulation. So I'll be speaking about the iRobots project, the Arcus project, and the Sherpa project. And also in the last column, maybe uh, in the next lecture for, to celebrate the 15th anniversary of uh, the journal, I may be speaking about the new project, which is Rodiman, and it's about uh, uh, robotic dynamic manipulation. But uh, this is maybe in another uh, opportunity. Uh, we've been lucky, or maybe we've been good, to raise uh, a pretty nice amount of money for funding because we got 8.3 million euro financial support in the last uh, five years thanks to all these projects. So, as an introduction, uh, let me, I mean, being a professor, I'm always used to give definition and it's good to classify what we mean by aerial manipulation. We mean the grasping, transporting, positioning, and either assembly or disassembly of mechanical parts, measurements, instruments, objects, and the peculiarity is this: this kind of manipulation is not carried out by a ground-based robot, a fixed robot manipulator. It's not carried out by a mobile manipulator on wheels or maybe on like a crawler, but it's carried out by a flying manipulator. So this is uh, uh, the um, specifics of the system which are known in the literature and in the technical field as unmanned aerial vehicles. And the peculiarity is that uh, they are like, uh, they allow a vertical takeoff and landing. So this is the case, for instance, of a helicopter compared to the typical fixed wing vehicles that need a sort of uh, launching pad or like a uh, uh, sort of landing platform. So um, the why, I mean, UAS, unmanned aerial systems, were around since 15, 20 years. Why it's now of interest for the field of aerial robotics? Because these systems not only inspect, surveil, so it's not only to have a sort of flying eye. For instance, uh, uh, this is being filmed, and now in the uh, media industry, you can use drones, you can use flying cameras to inspect. The peculiarity here is to have not only a flying eye, but also a flying hand. So the possibility of having a hand that flies, and in such a way, if this system is endowed with a gripper or a robotic arm, not only I, can, I expect, can I inspect, but also I can do some sort of manipulation. And this is what I'm going to illustrate uh, in the next slides. But, uh, so these are just uh, a number of uh, uh, applications, which uh, one way or the other are at the frontier of service robotics. So this is the use of uh, quadcopters for uh, aerial uh, uh, rescue in alpine, in mountain environments. Uh, this is a, a sort of uh, funny application in which uh, uh, the drone is a sort of patrolling a biker in the sense that uh, 
you know, you can set up the speed and you can have the biker to adjust to the speed and also you can do filming of, uh, of, uh, of your performance. And this is another uh, rescue scenario in which uh, there is a fire and there are some kind of people to be rescued and you can use drones to rapidly uh, localize the people in need of uh, rescue. And this is also some sort of uh, a visionary scenario in which uh, multicopters are being used. Uh, and let me illustrate some applications which are very tough to be solved by humans. And what you will see in, in these videos are a number of uh, um, interventions where the labor, where the human operation is at risk. So those are hostile environments in which it might be very dangerous for a human to carry out this task. So this is the case, for instance, of this bridge. And you can see that the operator is uh, kind of suspended at a very high height and has to be to carry out the application. And uh, there is a danger and there is a risk of an accident in this, in, in this case. Uh, the next application is also similar. Can you, can you probably see those people walking along, along the bridge? Of course, you know, they have strings for safety. But uh, again, I, I think you agree with me that this is a very... Uh, awkward operation to be carried out by, by a human. And uh, there's a, another similar application here in which, uh, again, there's a sort of human intervention. So the difficulty here is uh, posed by the, uh, by the uh, uh, hard access to the place where you have to do the maintenance, the repair or the servicing, and also the fact that uh, uh, you might have winds, you might have currents, and those are kind of disturbance for the human operator and likewise will be for the robot whenever those will be, will be used. And uh, in the last video segment, I will show one application of servicing for electrical power plants. So you can see that the operator is transported by a helicopter, then it gets to the same voltage, not to get, uh, not to get killed, and uh, the operator does the manual, the repair manually, and it's kind of uh, suspended. So we don't want this operation to be carried out by humans because uh, the operations are very expensive and they also expose the human to risk of injury or even, even, even death. Um, as a, a first contribution in, uh, 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 in, in, in research, uh, we, we work to solve uh, this kind of problem. But before I address the research issues, let's see if uh, aerial manipulation might represent a sort of business op opportunity. Uh, this is a, a movie, you can recognize uh, the uh, uh, Amazon is a, a provider for delivery of books and any kind of object. And uh, you probably know the story of Amazon purchasing Kiva Systems. Kiva Systems was a company which was funded by my colleague at uh, um, ETH in Zurich, Raffaello D'Andrea, and this was a smart idea of the mobile uh, AGVs. So it's kind of optimizing the shelves for all the storage. And this is the same idea in which you are the third dimension. So it's kind of a flying delivery. And uh, this drone can deliver the package to the uh, consignee, to the uh, recipient of the package. And uh, so by the time you press the button, I mean, one day, in one and a half day, you can have a kind of drone flying and delivery the package to the, uh, to, the, to the customer. So, of course, there are a number of issues that have to be solved. The regulations are not clear yet in the field, but we are not too far from this kind of uh, uh, prospective application. Uh, a month ago, I was with my kids sitting in the room watching TV, and it was uh, a nice commercial. And, uh, <laughs> and this is a commercial about drones. Actually, the image is not so positive because uh, you see that some of the drones, just they go hitting like posts. But this was a way also to market, in this case, an automobile, a car, and you see a platoon of drones. So this could be an additional business opportunity to use drones, you know, in this case, for, uh, for, for marketing. And it's kind of cool, you know, it's kind of, in fact, my kids, they, they, they told me like, Dad, look, you know, this is the kind of stuff that you're doing. So why don't you make money and doing commercial <laughs> with them? Well, yeah, that's, that's maybe another business opportunity. Just more serious, like, uh, we have a number of industrial applications. And so this is a, a huge plant. 
and you can see that the operator can operate in a more relaxed condition without having to jump to crawl, you know, close to the plant. And so basically, it can, uh, it can operate the drones, it can teleoperate the drone, the, the, the drone in this case, and uh, the drone can, only, can not only inspect whether any kind of, if this, for instance, a pipe or a wall with some rust that has to be removed, but can actually man, uh, operate an arm, which is attached to the drone that, has, uh, 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 that is used to do this kind of manual operation. So let, let me come now in the second part of my video lecture uh, about some research in iron manipulation. As I mentioned in my introductory slide, we've been engaged into three research projects sponsored by the uh, European Commission. The first one being the so-called iRobots project, which was a project that ran from 2010 until 2013. So this is, uh, this is finished. And as I somewhat anticipated, the novelty here is not only to navigate an environment, you know, here in, 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 this, uh, in, 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 this, in these videos, you see as a typical slam problem in which you want to navigate the, uh, uh, the, uh, the drone into some environment, and this is the typical simultaneous localization and mapping problem which is solved. But if I, if I just go back here, you see here that uh, uh, there is a, a, a ducted fan, which is a type of aerial vehicle which is used. And here, as, I hope if I just can go back, you know, just uh, the video will be showing, there is a little arm which is mounted. This is actually a parallel manipulator which is mounted on, onto the ducted fan. And this performs some sort of task. In this case, it was doing some kind of operation on the wall. And it was interesting to see that the kind of techniques, control, I'm a control engineer, and so we employed, we used some of the well-known impedance control techniques also in the context of aerial manipulation. Uh, the second project I'm going to speak about is uh, the same concept of a flying manipulator, but this time there is not only one flying hand, but there are two flying hands. This is the so-called ARCAS project. ARCAS stands for Aerial Robot Cooperative and Assembly Systems. And in this rendering, you see two autonomous helicopters carrying a, a lightweight arm uh, this is a, a rendering of the KUKA lightweight arm, and the idea is to pick up this pipe and to carry in a very hostile location to access and to mount this pipe onto a sort of truss structure. So you can even do construction with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the autonomous helicopter. Of course, this is different from a small drone because this is a really a big helicopter, but what I want to stress is that this operation can be performed either uh, in a sort of teleoperated fashion or in a sort of semi-autonomous fashion. So this is the kind of uh, problem that we solved. And uh, since we are uh, half the way, the four years of duration of this project, this is the first worldwide flight experiment of aerial manipulation with a fully actuated robot arm using force and visual control. So compared to the rendering, this is only one helicopter and one arm. But now we're working on the extension to a two helicopters and two arms. So this is the uh, flying uh, field available at DLR. DLR is the German Aerospace Agency, which is a partner in this project. And you can see this helicopter carrying the same arm that you saw in the rendering. And we will perform uh, this sort of, uh, of aerial manipulation using uh, visual control in the gross motion and then using uh, force control in, in the fine motion. So basically it's one scenario in which we can do the same task that we were doing with ground-based manipulators, but the difficulty is to do this with, uh, with the flying manipulator. And as you can understand, the difficulty is that you have to compensate also for the current, for, 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 for the winds which are disturbing, so your control algorithm has to be quite robust. Uh, that one was an outdoors application. This one instead is an indoors application. This is the flying arena available at Katek. Katek is, uh, is the aerospace facility of, uh, the and which was sponsored by the Andalusia government because the coordinator of the ARCAS project is Professor Anibal Oliero from University of, uh, of Seville in Spain. And this is the flying arena there and you can see uh, a number of tasks in which we're using a, a, a quadcopter to uh, pick up this bar on, on to, on to which, which is available here. And also, uh, we use uh, eye 
in hand some visual servoing technique in which the camera is mounted on the quadcopter, on the quadcopter and it's observing, it's recognizing the object and then it will duly uh, pick it up and, and carry out in a satisfactory way. Typically, when you have a flying arena, you also have a motion capture system that is not used to actually control the quadcopter, but it's, also, it's only used to, to check the performance. So this is the so-called ground fruit. You want to estimate how accurate is your control and how well the control is performing. So we also have a flying arena at uh, University of, of, of Naples and we are performing this kind of uh, experiment. The last project I'm going to speak about is the so-called Sherpa project. And Sherpa is using uh, a sort of hybrid technology, aerial hybridly combined with ground robo robotics to rescue people up on the mountains. And actually one of the partners in the Sherpa project is Club Alpino Italiano, which is the mountain association in Italy for the, Sher the Sherpa. Sherpa is the name for the mountain guide in the, in the Himalaya mountains. So as you have seen, you have seen a scenario of, for instance, of rescuing someone who has been submerged by an avalanche. Uh, the life uh, under an avalanche uh, to survive, survival is about 30 minutes, 45 minutes. So you need a rapid intervention. And sometimes the sensor technology is not enough. You can quickly localize the victim in, in need of rescue, but also you need some sort of technology which assists you, and in this case assists the Sherpa guide to help and possibly save the life of the person which, which is under the avalanche. And there is a similar scenario. This is a rendering because uh, this project has just started. We are now, uh, we just completed the first year of this project. So um, you won't see many actual experiments we're, because we're still in a sort of feasibility study phase in which we are developing the ideas that we will implement on the actual scenarios. And this is a summer scenario. There's been a victim here. And uh, also you will see an operator in a while which is wearing a sort of biokinetic sensor suite and uh, it is extracting motions and also, as you will hear in the video, there will be some uh, verbal commands like uh, uh, the blue quadot quadcopter has to uh, lift up, has to land or has to do some operation. So you can also combine uh, the human-robot uh, interaction techniques not only visually in a sort of virtual environment, but also verbally in terms of uh, the voice uh, uh, interaction. So this was uh, a short or long uh, video lecture on aerial manipulation. I hope uh, you got an interest uh, towards this research field. And I wish to take this opportunity to thank the International Journal of Advanced Robotic Systems for having invited me to give this lecture. So happy 10th anniversary. And as you can probably recognize, the picture is taken uh, in, in, a foot, in a soccer stadium. Uh, I am shooting this lecture during uh, uh, the World Cup, the, the soccer World Cup, because uh, uh, robotics is my passion, but life is priorities. And uh, soccer is a slightly higher passion than robotics. Thank you.